Yeah. So I just look back on my life and I just feel like me creating things mm -hmm. mainly for a purpose. I think yeah. have brought a lot of healing right. in my life. Creating. I love yeah. that. So I so also we... think that's important is people to find something that is motivating to them. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes it's finding that larger purpose. Yeah. So a buzzword right now is being authentic. Right. Right. So your authentic self is honesty, mm -hmm. right? And being honest with yourself and others of how you feel. And that's an element of being authentic and true to yourself, which then is a healing process. Hi, I'm Dr. Angie Holzer. And this is a video of highlights from a recent podcast I did with a good friend of mine, Johnny Barthus. He's doing a podcast called Quilty Friends Podcast, focusing on making with mental health. So check out his podcast. I hope you enjoy. Johnny. Hello and welcome to another episode of Quilty Friends Podcast. I got to practice saying that. Quilty Friends Podcast <laughs> with Johnny Barfus. Quilty Friends Podcast with Johnny Barfus. Today, my guest is Angie, Angie. Holzer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Angie Holzer, if you will. Oh, yes, that is your YouTube channel. It is. That you just started. Yep. I love that. Thank you. It's been so, going really great. Yeah. So we've been focusing on not necessarily yoga classes, but just mental health, how yoga helps with mental health. Awesome. And that's why I really wanted you to be on here. So, so mental health mm -hmm. and being creative for mental health. Mm -hmm. All right. How do you feel? What are you um, thoughts on that? Yeah. So when you asked me kind of how I make really uh, create is kind of how I see it is uh -huh. what have I done throughout my life to help heal and create to kind of with my mental health. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big, like, I love music. I've created music. I write music for my mental health. I've tried painting. I'm not super great, but it really is an oh, outlet for great. me. Thank you. During COVID in California, we were locked down for several months. And so I ran to Michael's the lap right before they closed. And I bought out like two dozen frames and, and all the paint I could find. So every week I did a different picture for her. So, so painting, music, and then several years ago, I created some children's books for speech development um, called Speak With Me. And mm -hmm. so um, I was not the artist, but I found artists and I really, it's poetry. Children's writing is really more poetry. So that was an outlet for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, well, then you have six books and or seven more, now, oh, seven. seven, yeah. And two different illustrators or three. Yeah, yeah. three or four. A few oh. of them you actually know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's great. It was great. And then I actually have a CD of children's music that are really slow. So children that struggle with speech development can sing it with sing along. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So I just look back on my life and I just feel like me creating things mm -hmm. mainly for a purpose. I think yeah. have brought a lot of healing right in my life. Creating. I love yeah. that. So we were just talking about creative and making mm -hmm. creating and making can be interchangeable. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. And I will interject right here that people who say I'm not creative, mm -hmm. it's impossible. You're creative. If you're a person, if you're alive, you're creative. That's I how I feel. I agree. We're all creative in some way. I and, agree. Or we all have the opportunity um, to be creative. So yep. you're creative. I'm just going to tell you right now. You are creative. <laughs> um, oh, wait. You have a doctorate. I do. I got my doctorate degree. What was that in? Tell us about that. Um, it's in educational learning and leadership. Mm -hmm. And so, so right before I got my doctorate, I decided to go to India to get certified for yoga. Uh -huh. I really wanted that experience. Yeah. And so when I returned, I started working at Stanford, um, teaching yoga there. Then I decided to get my doctorate, really focusing on um, human trafficking. Very oh, different. Yeah. So I do have my other part of my life is human uh, humanitarian and nonprofit uh -huh. sector. And so, really, during that process of me doing my research with human trafficking, um, I recognized very strongly that I needed a balance. And so, yoga was my balance. And so, mm -hmm. I ended up going back during my doctorate and getting uh, certified in yoga for mental health. No. Oh. So that's what I started my YouTube channel this past year, um, Yoga Will Heal, and really we just focus on different mental health, um, areas of mental health and how yoga can help. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are discussions with like Dr. Gabor Mate, if you're familiar with that, as well as, you know, Besser van der Kolk, mm -hmm. his book, which Body Keeps the Score. I ran and grabbed my copy so people could see if yeah. they wanted. So this is a really great book that talks about mental health and trauma, really, mm -hmm. like working through trauma mm -hmm. and all the ways that you can heal that trauma. Mm -hmm. So I listened <laughs> to the book on um, audio, uh -huh. which, which I loved because yeah. I could walk and think right. at the same time. But really, I was introduced to that book because um, 
Besser van der Kolk, who's the author of mm -hmm. it, right? He talks about when you are when you have had trauma in your life, uh -huh. there are different ways to heal. And it's really important to involve the body and movement and touch, really, really right. like massage, which I know is your yeah. forte, um, your expertise. And so really, he he's a really big proponent of yoga. Mm -hmm. And he talks about not only talk therapy, right, and medication, those are two kind of things we've been using in the past, but really involving the body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that you do really well is when you're quilting and you're, you know, this movement involving mm -hmm. involved with creating is yeah. really important um, in the trauma healing. Process. Yes. And really a lot of the things, every time I research a different mental health topic, um, like the breath, right. Mm -hmm. That is such an healing um, exercise, mm -hmm. which can be involved with everything you do in creating, right. right. Um, quilting is one painting music. It's slowing the breath down right really yeah. kind of helping your nervous system cope better with the trauma that you're, you're dealing with and the um the stress that you deal with and so that's a lot of the things that i focus on mm -hmm. in my, in nice. my teaching, so. so there's a quote that i i talk about in my yoga classes by albert einstein uh -huh. whether he said it or not right it's contributed to him and he says i think 99 times and i find nothing i stop thinking swim in silence and the truth comes to me right oh, yeah so it's this nice. beauty of just doing something with movement or motion, um, listening to music or humming. You know, they talk about, if you're familiar with the vagus nerve, it's part of the mm -hmm. body where it calms you. Mm -hmm. um, humming is something that does, you activate the vagus oh. nerve. So, which is, I yes, didn't know, I humming. didn't remember that. How yeah, was that? yeah, humming, singing, um, it's very soothing. So on my YouTube channel, I have to plug that, there's a video with 20 vagus, uh, 20 techniques for the vagus nerve uh -huh. um, that helps with self-soothing. Mm -hmm. I right. like that phrase, at least in the therapy world. It's right. when you talk about set, when you're dealing with trauma or stress or anxiety or depression, what are the elements in your life that help you self-soothe? Right. Right. Yeah. And for me, I go to writing music or songs or um, sometimes it's been painting, mm -hmm. not very much. It sounds like you do the quilting. Right. So I just think it's important for everybody to find the elements that are that are helpful for them to help self-soothe and deal with the stress in their life. Right. right. So I also think that's important is people to find something that is motivating to them. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes it's finding that larger purpose. Yeah. And yes. So we were talking about Dr. Gabor Mate. His mm -hmm. specialty really is childhood trauma and how mm -hmm. we can heal from uh -huh. that. Um, and so one of the videos that really has gone big on my channel is a speech that he gave about being too nice is harmful to yourself. What? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, so I think a lot of times in our culture, especially uh -huh. women, right? Sometimes we are told just to be nice and that is the way to go. Mm -hmm. But he, you really need to listen to his words because he talks about the importance of, of course, setting boundaries okay. um, and learning to say no. Yeah. Right. Excellent. And being overt about it. So his big thing really is a lot of the diseases. He believes that a lot of diseases that we have is we are suppressing our emotions. And so learning to uh, recognizing your emotions and expressing mm -hmm. those emotions is part of um, really not being too nice sometimes because when you're feeling something, an emotion, an anger, frustration, instead mm -hmm. of swallowing that emotion, it's learning to express it in a healthy way. In a healthy way. Um, but really, I think it's absolutely okay to be firm and say something, I do not like that, mm -hmm. right? Set a boundary. Um, setting a boundary. And mm -hmm. so in doing that, a lot of these diseases, like they've actually linked arthritis to um, really the suppression of emotions. Really? He talks about how 80% of autoimmune diseases are from women. And he said, for an example, I'm going to give you the whole speech right now, but he says, for an example, really, they've done studies where, you know, a man goes in for heart surgery and a female goes into heart surgery. A lot of the times our culture is set up where the man goes home and gets taken care of by his wife mm -hmm. and heals a lot quicker where the female does not, right? She goes home and now is taking care of everybody. So right. it's learning to set boundaries, learning to stand up for yourself mm -hmm. um, and learning to express your emotions, right? right? And in doing so, it's a healing, it's a healing process. Um, right. And he says that a lot of these diseases will be reduced. Okay. You can, it's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. It's okay to set a boundary. And, and it is okay to express your emotions right? and, and right. And not feeling like you always have to be nice about things, uh -huh. but being honest. And I think his also 
a buzzword right now is being authentic. Right. Right. So your authentic self is honesty, Mm -hmm. right? And being honest with yourself and others of how you feel. And that's an element of being authentic and true to yourself, which then is a healing process. Yeah. I took a course once about Mm -hmm. something. It was a a life-changing course, whatever, a personal development course. Mm -hmm. And they taught that you should not say sorry if Mm -hmm. you don't mean it. Saying sorry is just like a bandage. Right. And it usually just gives us permission to do it again. So I'm really trying to to um, weed out the word sorry from my vocabulary mm. because it's such a part of our culture that we just go, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I And I, I get frustrated that I say it so much and then I hear it and I'm like, so I'm going to challenge you mm. to listen to how many times you say sorry in the next couple of days and then mm. as listen to how, to, how often you hear it. Mm. And if you really mean, I make, you know, it's okay to apologize if you've done something wrong But the best way to do that is to make a commitment to do something different, commit to doing something different in the future. So all that's I want to say is stop apologizing. Well, and, you know, I remember having a conversation with a friend that we know Uh um, a few months ago where this person apologized a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point where this person was apologizing so much and it was it was kind of taking away my agency. Sorry, I did this. And I just thought I have I. I need to set boundaries for myself. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. don't need to be apologizing for that. I mean, I need to learn to set boundaries. So right. I don't think sorry is bad. Right. At the same time, I think we say it too much and it's enabling other people's behaviors. Yes. Right? And I've also seen the recently where it says, um, like whatever on the social medias mm. that talk about saying thank you mm. instead of sorry. Yes. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for understanding. You Thank know. you for waiting. And so yeah. I'm so sorry I'm late. Thank yeah. you for waiting. Thank you for waiting for I me. Understanding. And I think a lot of the things that I do as well is, you know, when you're you were trying to heal from something mm-hmm. or you've had trauma or you're stressed, you're recognizing your emotions, yeah. right? And you're owning your emotions and you're appropriately responding. Right. Right. I think when we feel anger, oftentimes we think that's a bad response to get angry, but mm-hmm. I think there's an appropriate way to express the anger. Right. Um, to set those boundaries. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Thanks for Angie listening. Holzer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Thanks for Angie listening. Holzer. Again, Dr. Angie Holzer. She has a, um, her own YouTube channel. It is called yoga will heal. Dr. Angie Holzer. Make sure you subscribe to her channel. Um, and we also encourage you to use that hashtag, making for mental health. Um, if you're doing something creative, if you are making something, if you're whatever it is that you're working on in your life, and if you're posting about it on social media, we love to use that hashtag, making for mental health. All right. Thank you again so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Really Have a great day, time. everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Be kind to one another.